to be talking about adiabatic temperature changes. Um, these are changes in temperature without heat energy being added or removed, which is kind of counterintuitive. You know, we think about um, heating something up by adding heat energy with either uh, putting it over a candle flame or on a stove, or we cool it off because we put it in the refrigerator or the freezer or we add ice to it. So we add or remove heat energy. But actually we can change the temperature without doing that by expanding or compressing air. And so when air expands, it cools, and this is usually because we've lifted air some way. We, uh, we make it rise or we lift it in the atmosphere, and that lower pressure causes it to expand. Um, and the opposite also holds true. If we compress air, we smash it, um, which is usually due to sinking in the atmosphere, it warms. And so um, that um, higher pressure when we sink air makes it compress. I kind of like to think of it like a suitcase. Um, so if I'm packing a suitcase but it, I've got too much really for my bag, I have to kind of sit on it to get it uh, latched or zipped. And then when I get to my um, location, if I unlatch it or unzip it, it kind of pops. So lower pressure is that expansion, and the higher pressure is when I have to like smash it all in there. Um, I'm going to have you, if you're working in class, to stop the video here, and you're going to play with either can air or fizz savers. Um, and if you are uh, watching this as a flip video, um, you'll go ahead and move forward, and we'll look at both can air and fizz saver experiments and what happens there. What we've got is compressed air. It's just a can of compressed air. And so what we're going to do for this one is I'm going to um, be measuring the temperature with this temperature probe. We're going to give it a three second spray and watch what happens to the temperature. And so as you can see that um, all that happened to the can is it started to get cold. It's actually quite dramatic if you um, get a chance to try this in class and you're just kind of watching from home. Um, it's a good, it just try it, it's kind of fun. Um, and so you can see that temperature is dropping, not because I stuck it in a refrigerator. You can even tell I'm even giving it a little bit of body heat because I'm touching it with my hand. But um, that temperature is dropping quite dramatically only because I'm allowing that air that's inside that can to expand. And as it expands, it cools. Um, so that temperature is still dropping. Um, we're down quite a few <laughs> degrees there um, just from that three-second spray. All right, so adiabatic temperature change. Can air. And in the can, you can see that the number 74 is lit up the brightest. So our initial temperature is 74. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that pumper that's on the top of the bottle, and we're going to pump it 100 times. I'm not going to touch the top of the bottle. I'm not going to touch the sides of the bottle at all. I'm only going to touch the top. And so um, we're going to see what happens to the temperature as we add some air into that container. So I won't be adding body heat, just air. there's 100 pumps and now what we can see is the number 78 looks like it is lit up the brightest um, and so um, if I also now if I feel the the bottle it feels really tight and it feels like a new brand new bottle of pop there 
Um, so our after 100 pumps temperature was 78. Um, so now uh, we didn't, and again, we didn't increase the temperature by holding on to the bottle or by putting it in this heat source. We only um, added more air to that bottle, so we compressed the air, which increased the temperature. So that was an adiabatic temperature change. So now as I release that pressure, what we'll see is that temperature should decrease quite rapidly. And so you can see that temperature then begin to fall. And that, my friends, is an adiabatic temperature change. We've done your experiments, and what we know is that the dry adiabatic, there are, the air cooling and warming happens at a predictable rate. And you don't have to memorize these numbers. We will always give them to you. Um, but the dry adiabatic rate is the predictable number for when there's no change of state of water. And that's 10 degrees Celsius for every kilometer or every thousand meters. So for example, if we lift air um, a thousand meters, it will cool 10 degrees. If we sink air a thousand meters, it will warm uh, 10 degrees as well. So, but then we have to think about what if the what if it rises and cools to its dew point? Well, we already know then that water is going to condense. So then what happens is um, the, what's called the wet adiabatic rate. So after air cools to its dew point, that latent heat becomes a factor. Um, energy goes from the water into the atmosphere and warms the atmosphere just a little bit. Um, and we already know that when condensation happens, we're going to get things like clouds and fog and dew and frost and rain. Um, and we've already talked about why clouds have flat bottoms. Um, but when that water condenses and that latent heat is released, what happens is that warms the air just a smidge. The air is still going to cool, but it's not going to cool quite as fast. And so the wet adiabatic rate is approximately 6 degrees Celsius for every 1,000 meters. Um, but that's an average. It actually varies from anywhere from 5 to 9 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, we'll usually use 5 because it's just a friendlier number. And again, you don't have to memorize that. So what happens here is let's say we have air, an air parcel at 20 degrees Celsius. If we lift it 1,000 kilometers or 1,000 meters after reaching its dew point, it's actually only going to cool to say 15 or 14 degrees Celsius. So now what you're going to do is in, if you're in class, you're going to go ahead and uh, go to your hand warmer demo um, and your teacher will pass out some hand warmers. And if you are watching this as a flip, um, we'll go forward for that hand warmer demo. these hand warmers. So we're going to look at the impacts of condensation on the adiabatic temperature change. Uh, we can't use condensation. Um, it's not very easy to see. It's not very easy to make happen in a classroom. So instead of going from a gas to a liquid, we're going to go from a liquid to a solid. Um, if you can just stop for a second and think, what is that process called going from a liquid to a solid? And if you're having trouble, think about the Part of the appliance that's in your kitchen, it's not the refrigerator. It's usually on top of that. It's called the freezer. Okay, so we're going to freeze this. Um, and as we do so, we're going to look at the temperature change that happens. So I'm just going to put this uh, temperature probe right here. And then you'll notice inside here there's a little disc. And if I just turn that disc inside out, you'll see it start to freeze. And you can watch the temperature change as that occurs. So if you've talked with your classmates or you're watching that temperature, you'll notice that the temperature is not going down, it's going up. So we've been talking about that latent heat piece, that hidden heat energy that happens when a substance changes state. And so here what we've got going on is as these, uh, as this substance gives up its energy so that it can go from a more a disorganized state to a more organized state, what we see is that that, temp that energy, that latent heat energy has to be released. 
So in this case, um, what you can also see are the crystals on the back. Let me see if I can zoom us in here a little bit. Um, you can kind of see those lines that um, make those crystals. So you see these great big long lines kind of going through here. Again, if you get a chance to try this in the classroom, you'll get to see those a little bit better. Um, but here, this is still uh, giving off heat energy. It's still warm. And so as those, um, as those molecules get more organized, they have to give up that latent heat. So uh, same thing happens with water. If we condense a cloud, it's going to give off a little bit of heat. So now if we go back and think about our can air experiment, you know, this one got colder. Um, but now if I start to condense water and I were to put this heat pack up against this one, as I cooled it, would it get as cold? It wouldn't. So our wet adiabatic rate is a little bit less than the dry adiabatic rate because you have this latent heat that's kind of keeping things a little bit warmer. Um, so uh, happy adiabatic temperature changes.